Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining. My name is Anne Markey and I'm a Christian speaker and author and I'm the head behind the blog OneDeterminedLife.com. For the next couple of weeks, I want to spend a few minutes each week focusing on the Lord, bringing you short biblical devotions to help you focus on Jesus, the real reason for the season. My husband and I have been married for 15 and a half years and we have three kids. In that time, three out of five of those people are currently getting support for anxiety. Now, when I say support, I mean either medication or counseling or both. And I'm not just talking about everyday anxieties, that's the normal level, but sometimes extreme anxiety that actually inhibits people's lives. Needless to say, we have a lot of experience with feelings of anxiety, stress, worry, and a bunch more. When our kids act out due to their anxiety, we encourage them to use calm down routines and work on refocusing their thoughts and work on finding triggers for those anxieties to see if we can maybe get those out of the way. Now, doing that sometimes takes a lot of time. And sometimes as a parent, I feel like that process is a little bit too long and I wish there was something we could do to kind of speed it up. So we don't just encourage our kids to find triggers and to figure out what those are to decrease them, but then we also help them shift their focus to something else. So because we're Christians, we believe that the best thing they can do is to shift their focus from being anxious to the Lord. So that way, instead of focusing on all the things that they are worried about, they can focus on the Lord. So who he is and what he's done for them. John 16 verse 33 says this, I have told you these things so that in me, you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. The Bible tells us that we are going to face hard times. Just because we're Christians, doesn't mean that we're not gonna face trials, tribulations, or really difficult seasons. But since we know that we are gonna face some hard times, we can actually do things now to help us prepare for them so when they do come, we can have peace in those crazy moments. One of the things I love doing is to encourage Christian women to go straight to the Bible to find answers. The Bible is extremely practical and tells us exactly what we can do to feel more peace and less anxious. So for the remainder of our time, I just wanna spend a few minutes thinking about five things that we can do or stay away from so that we can gain more peace. So the very first thing you have to do is to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you're not saved, you can do the rest of this list and never find peace because true peace doesn't come from ourselves, doesn't come from the world around us. It comes from the Lord Jesus Christ. Romans 5 verse 1 to 2 say this, Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. When we're without Christ, we are enemies with God. And so we're not close to God. And so we're not gonna feel peace when we're separated from him. But when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ as a Lord and personal savior, we suddenly gain a relationship with the Lord but then we get access into his presence. And so the king of peace himself, then his presence and who he is, is what gives us peace. Not only that, but once we're saved, our salvation guarantees us eternity with him. So that means that regardless of what's happening in our lives, we can think this is not gonna last forever. That one day I will be with God in heaven with him for eternity. And I don't know about you, but when my life is going crazy and things just keep happening and things feel really stressful, one of the ways my heart gets encouraged is to think about 
God's timing and how certain seasons can feel really long and really hard. But the Bible tells us that those seasons pale in comparison to the glory and the majesty of God and heaven. And so thinking about these things not only encourages me, but gives me peace knowing that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and that one day I will experience that eternal peace in heaven with God. Number two, I don't know about you, but the number one time in my day where I'm feeling the most anxious or my kids are feeling the most anxious is at nighttime. There is something about the nighttime that just increases our anxiety. And usually that's because we've slowed down. We now have time to think about all the things that may happen, all the things that we're worried about, thinking about this scenario and this scenario, oh, I wish I had said that and not this and so on. I know that my brain is very loud sometimes at night and that I have sometimes a hard time falling asleep because my thoughts are just going and going and going. But the word of God tells us what we can do in that scenario. Psalm chapter four, verse eight says this, in peace, I will lie down and sleep for you alone, Lord, make me dwell in safety. So one of the things that you can do to keep that unrest at bay is to end your day thinking about the Lord Jesus Christ by refocusing our thoughts from all our worries to him helps us put our trust in him, helps us shift the burden that we are carrying from our shoulders to his and realizing that we may not have the power to change what's happening around us, but God does. So instead of trying to do all those things on our own, when we take it from our shoulders to his, it's like taking that burden off. It's saying, okay, you know what? I can't worry about this anymore. I cannot solve this problem. I'm gonna go to the person who can solve this problem, give it to him and say, okay, I trust you. And that act of trust and submission and just unloading gives us so much peace. My middle daughter is 10 years old and she really loves knowing exactly what's going to happen, you know, from morning until night. She needs a schedule. And she, when she doesn't know what's happening next, she feels really, really anxious. And so she tries to like rush the schedule or she's always asking me what's happening next. What's happening next? What's happening next? It's gotten so bad that in some instances, I have to take her face and point it towards mine and say, hey, worrying about what happens next isn't your job. That's my job. I know the schedule. I know what we're doing first. I know what we're good doing second. So don't worry about it. I've got this. And as I'm having those conversations with her, I can't help but relate my relationship to the Lord. You know, sometimes I go to the Lord and I say, what are you doing? I thought we were doing this, 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 and this, and I want to do all these things. And he looks at me and he's like, hey, I know what's coming down the road. Trust me, I've got it. And so handing him over that control, which really wasn't mine to begin with, God is in complete control of anything, suddenly shifts that burden off of me and to the Lord. So I want you just to take a minute and to think about some burdens that you are carrying or things that you're worried about and say, is that my job to worry about this? Or is this something I can give to the Lord? And honestly, 99.99% of the time, it's not your burden to carry. And even if it is, the Lord says, you don't have to carry it alone. Bring your burdens to me. I want to carry them for you, or I want to give you the strength for you to carry them yourself. So let's not end our day in feeling anxious and worried. Let's end our days thinking about the Lord and giving him our burdens in our worry. And I promise you that the peace will come. The third thing we can do is to actually pursue peace. Now, let me give you an example of this before I read the verse. One of the things that gives me really like fired up and riled up is, you know, 
perceived or actual injustices. It's even come to the point that sometimes my husband and I will be laying in bed and he'll say, oh, and I'm not sure if I need to tell you now or later, because if I do, you're probably going to be bothered by it and you won't be able to sleep. And most of the times he's not, but I wish he wouldn't even say that because then my mind gets curious and I say, I want to know, like, what's the thing? And so I beg him to tell me and then he tells me and guess what happens? I get fired up and then I have the hardest time falling asleep because I don't want those injustices to continue. I want to find a solution to kind of get it done. And these events or things that happen really bother me. They kind of weigh on me. I really noticed this during COVID. I got caught up in all the different opinions of what was happening with COVID regulations and um, what we weren't allowed to do and vaccines or no vaccines. And I'm sure this happened with you and your family or your church is that suddenly you had two very different camps and they were in opposition to each other. And so I was in a particular camp and anytime I thought about the other camp, I would just get all like frustrated being like, what are they thinking? That is so completely and utterly ridiculous, right? And it would just like rise in me and I would just feed into it, right? I'd read the news stories, I'd read the comments. I was very tempted to post on social media a million of times trying to be like, no, we gotta write this wrong. But there's a better way because what I noticed is that suddenly those actions were not in pursuit of peace. They were in pursuit of being right or showing that you know more than this person or that person. And the divide just got bigger and bigger and bigger. And so the Lord was so gracious to me and said, Anne, you're getting angry at your brother and sister in Christ. You know what? They may be wrong. I may be wrong, but the Lord wants us to pursue peace, not unrest. And so when we fight with one another, when we fight with other Christians, that's just bringing more unrest. And so the Lord encourages us to say, I don't want you to go after those things that bring up arguments. We've got three kids and they fight about everything. And sometimes they'll come to us and they'll just start telling us all the things that they're fighting about. And one of the things I start thinking and telling them is, this is not worth an argument. Just let it go. And then I think, oh, you know what? That is also something I need to tell myself. How many times do I get upset about something that just gets me fired up and not at peace at all? That is not worth the energy or the argument. Psalm 34, 14 says this, turn from evil and do good, seek peace and pursue it. So we have to be active in it, right? It's a lot easier to get in that argument. Growing up, my family, we argued a lot. And so when I got married, my husband does not like confrontation. And so suddenly there was no arguments and I hardly knew what to do with myself and sometimes I would try to like poke him just to start an argument and he just would not bite and so one day I was kind of like feeling like I needed an like a fight and he's like why don't you just call your sister so I called my sister and I forget what in the world happened but we ended up just in a big argument and at the end of the phone call we were both like Thanks. I needed that. (laughs) And the reason why that was so fulfilling was because I had just known this pattern of just fighting. And my husband just showed me a new way that, you know what, pursuing peace, pursuing relationships, dropping arguments that are just not worth it is so much better for me, for my mind, for our home, for just so many different things. But I have to choose not to let things bother me. I need to choose to say, you know what? No, I'm not going to think about that. I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole. I'm not going to get into that argument. If people want to start an argument for me, I need to be the bigger person and to say, you know what? I'm just not going to bite. I'm going to let it go. 
And then later, if it's still really bothering me, I can wrestle that out with the Lord. But I'm not to take these different things and then go to war with other Christians. The Bible wants us to pursue peace. And so I want you just to take a minute and to think about the things that are making you upset right now and to say, is this an argument that I can just drop? Is it really worth getting this upset over? And I don't know what it is that you're thinking about right now. I know there's a ton of different scenarios. And for some of you, it's going to be like, yeah, this is, I need to fight this. I need to win, right? But then most of the times, I know for me, it's like I that argument is only going to lead to worse things down the road. It's not going to lead me to good relationships. It's only going to bring me more trials or more hard things and so just for pursuing peace is actually better in the long run for everybody okay number four to experience true peace we must listen to the lord and his voice psalm 85 verse 8 says this i will listen to what the lord says he promises peace to his people his faithful servants but let them not turn to folly. So the world is full of noise. We have many computers in our pockets that we scroll through news or social media and we've got a bazillion different people telling us different messages coming from all the different directions. And it's really easy to start listening to those voices and to believe that they are right. And maybe in some cases, they are but it's really easy to get caught up in all of it and to actually lose focus because we get stringed along over here and the bible says you know you can be in the world and you can be hearing those things but i want you to listen to me we have access to the god of the universe and he wants a relationship with us he wants to speak to us through his word and through, you know, other Christians and fellowship. But we need to take the time to choose to listen to the right voices. My daughter came home from school yesterday and she was telling me how her social studies teacher had, you know, studying about the word of God and she had her degree in religion. Um, and she shared an opinion with her, with my daughter, and she was convinced that her professor was right. Her teacher was right because this is what she said. She's like, well, she knows more about the Bible than I do. And I know a lot about scripture and she has a degree in religion. So she must be right. And I was trying to explain her that just because somebody knows scripture or has a degree in religion does not mean that their opinion is the right one. Because in most cases, it's really easy to take anything we hear from the scripture and to shift its meaning or to make it say what we want to hear. And then we only join groups that agree with us. So then our opinion continues to be validated regardless if it's biblical or not. And so my daughter now thinks that I'm completely wrong, but I was just trying to explain to her that it's easy to get caught up in people's opinions because then, you know, they tell us, well, I know this because I'm an expert. Um, and so you have to believe me. But when we don't compare those things to what we read in scripture, then there's no guarantee that they're actually telling the truth. We always need to compare what people say to God's word. And that takes time. I've been a Christian for 35 years and I'm still learning to get the noise out of my brain and to hone in on the Lord himself. And it takes time to know what scripture says. And it takes time to be able to discern the voice of the Lord so that we can hear it above every other thing. But not only that, but then we need to choose to listen to his voice. 
So we have to learn what he sounds like, and then we have to choose to listen to it above everything else. And then the Lord continues and says, okay, now that you know what my voice sounds like, now that you've heard me say this to you, I want you to go ahead and I want you to obey me and do it. And so I encourage you to take some time and to think, what are all the things that I'm watching, listening to, hearing, thinking that is not from the Lord? And then think about how you can drown out those voices so that you can focus on the Lord and his voice and what he wants you to do. And like I said, that's a process and it takes time. So I don't want you to feel discouraged that you you know, don't get it right or whatever. This is just something that I want to encourage you just to be continuing doing. Always challenge what you think you know. Always challenge yourself and your thoughts and what you believe and challenge it with the truth, which is scripture itself. So drown out the noises and instead of listening to all those things around you, to focus in and to listen to the Lord. To end our time together, I want to share just one more practical thing that you can do to gain peace. And that is to love the word of God. The Bible tells us that spending time with the Lord in his word will bring us peace. Psalm 119 verse 165 says this, Great peace have those who love your law and nothing can make them stumble. So if you haven't read Psalm 119 yet, I encourage you to do so. It's the longest chapter in the Bible, but it's a poem. There's 26 sections, I believe, and, but each stanza is expressing and telling people and saying how I love your word. And it's talking about loving the word of God and the benefits of loving the word of God. And so this entire chapter is about encouraging us to not only read God's word, but to love it and to want to spend time with it. So if you're not loving the word of God and you're not longing to be in it, instead of feeling discouraged, I encourage you to bring that to the Lord and say, I want to love your word. Please give me that longing so that I can spend time with it. And I know that when I've done that, the Lord has either shift my perspective or he's helped me make that time to really spend time with him. And then when I'm studying the word of God for myself and I can find those gold little nuggets that is really truly encouraging to me, then I start loving spending time with the Lord because I know that if I keep digging, I'm going to find more treasure. So when we love the word of God, then we want to spend more time with him. And when we do that, we learn more about him. And any time we're focusing on the Lord and not ourselves and not the other voices around us, we're only going to gain more peace. And this is the number one thing you can do to gain peace. So if you've forgotten everything else, I want you to remember one thing, that if you're feeling anxious or unrest or you're lacking that peace and you want more of it, I encourage you to spend time with the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can do that through scripture reading, through prayer, and lots of other ways. But that is how you're going to gain peace, is just to spend time with God, learn who he is, learn his perspective on things, so that you're not getting as anxious about different things and you're learning to trust him with all of those worries. So I want you to know that regardless of what's happening in your world right now, you can find peace. Our peace is in the Lord Jesus Christ. He has conquered death and gives us everything we need to find peace in him and have a relationship with him. So I encourage you today, just to take a moment and spend time with the Lord and go to the source of peace so that you can experience it. Let's close our time in prayer. Lord God and Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this time that we can just set aside everything else and to spend time thinking about you and your word. And Lord, we thank you that you are the one that brings us peace. So help us to pursue peace, to pursue relationship with you, to pursue 
peaceful relationships with the people around us, Lord. And we thank you that you do not ask us to do things on our own, but that you give us all the tools we need to have peace with each other, Lord. And so just help us to give up those arguments that aren't worth it, to stop listening to all those voices that just bring us more anxiety. Help us to focus on you and what you say and what you have for us so that we can continue to have peace regardless of what's happening around us. Thank you for this time. And I just pray it's an encouragement to those who are listening. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you taking just a few minutes to spend time thinking about the Lord and his word and join me next week as we talk about the joy of the Lord. So thank you for watching and let me know in the comments what was encouraging to you and I'll see you next week. Bye.